Nick, and now joining us live on the phone line is five-time MLB All-Star and National League Most Valuable Player of the Year is Mr. Andrew Akachin. Andrew, my first question for you, how important is a game of baseball to you? It's something you grew up doing as a kid. Um, it's, it's a game that uh, you play and um, you have a lot of fun doing, um, but you realize the impact that you can make on other people while playing the game as well, just because of the outlet of, of the game itself. So, um, he making a big difference when playing on the field, and uh, yeah, it's, a, it's 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 very important to me. What has been like one of the most crucial points in your career that really just stuck out to you, being like, "Yes, this is why I chose to play the game I chose." Um, you know, there's a lot of moments, um, but I don't necessarily have one in particular. I guess maybe the biggest one for me is. Uh, you know, winning the Roberto Clemente Award um, back in 2015, um, realizing that um, I play the game because I love it. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to win, but at the same time, you realize the impact that you can make on a lot of people outside of, outside of the game. And um, winning that award made me realize, like, you know, this is part of the reason why I play it. This is um, why I love it, uh, because... I'm just able to impact people even when not thinking I am. You just realize that uh, when you encounter some people that um, have had some time with you or whatever that it may be, um, they you, you realize uh, you're making a difference not only on the field but off of it. What's been one moment that you talk about, you know, the people that outside the game and outside of the world that you might realize, oh, I did make an impact. What's been one story that stuck out to you most in that aspect? Um, you know, I've had, I've had kids, I've had uh, parents, um, you know, come up to me, um, and especially when I go on visits to places like Children's Hospital, um, them saying, um, that they never really liked to watch a game of baseball, but, um, ever since, uh, seeing me, um, you know, it brings a, a little light to their their dark days that they have. Um, you know, having a story or a family or someone telling me something like that, you know, it means a lot to me because, uh, like I said, sometimes I'm just going out and I'm just playing the game. Uh, I don't really think I'm making or an impact or helping someone out there just because I'm, you know, trying to hit a ball and I'm trying to throw, catch a throw ball and run. You know, it's, you don't, you don't look at it from that standpoint, but when you have someone like that who tells you that, that you're making an impact, um, you know, it's, uh, it, I mean, it, it goes a long way. This past summer, I was the play-by-play -play broadcaster for a collegiate summer baseball team, and I've made a lot of friends that are college athletes that are playing the game of baseball. What's one of the pieces uh, of advice that you would give a college athlete trying to make it to the major leagues? Uh, you know, well, just, you have to continue to keep working and, and putting the work in to, to make it where you want to go. So if your goal is to be a professional baseball player, you got to put the work in that um, you feel is, is, is what is what's going to propel you into getting into getting there. Um, so, you know, you don't ever want to lay your head down at night and say, you know, I didn't do enough or I don't think I did what I need to do to be able to pursue uh, my dream. So, you know, you want to be able to, every time you put your head down, go, I did everything I could possible to be able to to make it where I want to go. So you keep doing that on a daily basis, um, and every day um, you'll, you'll have a better chance as opposed to the person that doesn't um, do those things. So you have to just keep putting in the work every day. And, um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's one way of, of, of seeing if you're doing what you need to do to – to pursue your dream. Why did you choose baseball? Because you also won a state championship playing football in high school. So what made you choose baseball ultimately over any other sport? Well, honestly, I, it's one because I I stopped playing football because of an ACL injury mm -hmm. that I had. Um, um, that was, for me, that was the turn. That was the turn off. Like, you know, my dad was like, no, no more of that. You know, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't play football anymore. So um, it wasn't necessarily my choice. Um, it was more my dad looking uh, ahead as opposed to me looking, you know, right in the moment 
Uh, he, he, he could see that baseball was a better outlet for me. Um, and it, it wasn't something that I wanted to hear at the time, but, uh, you know, we, we stuck with it and, and really dialed into with baseball my last couple of years in, in high school. And then that's when I really became, um, just dialed in and, and like, and, 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 and you know, at the top of my game when I really committed to, to baseball and, and not a couple sports. So, um, yeah, I mean, that essentially that's why I chose mm-hmm. baseball. I mean, I always, I've told people before, I, 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 I liked playing other sports. I liked playing football, but I, I, I loved the baseball. So there was no, there was the, when it came to sports, my love for baseball outweighed any other thing. Who would you say the biggest role model in, in your life is? Uh, definitely, I'd say my dad is, um, just because of what um, the sacrifices he made, not only him, but my, my mom as well. But, um, you know, my dad being able to teach me the ways of, of not only not only being trying to, to pursue something and, and work for something that you want, but just being a man in general. Um, there's, a, there's just just a lot of things that he's taught me along the way, and uh, you know I, I wouldn't be here in the position that I am if it wasn't for him and his sacrifices um, that, that he that he put forth for me. And um, yeah, just making it to where I never had to worry. I never worried about anything. I never worried about um, you know what. If, if I can, what, what bat am I going to use because I don't have one? I always had a bat, you know, I always had a glove, I always had cleats, you know, he always took care of me to the point where it's just all I had to do was just focus on the game itself. So, um, yeah, he sacrificed a lot for me to, to be able to have that freedom. And, yeah, I mean, he, that's why he's the, one of, that's one of the reasons why he's my role model. Mm-hmm. You talked about the ACL injury and how important is it, and a lot of times people talk about how can you – you get down sometimes, but how is how can you continue to motivate yourself to fight back through this injury to come back stronger next season? Um, you just you just uh, you know some things you can't control. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have freak injuries like mine, um, but you know for me, um, it's just another another page in my book that um, you know that that I'm writing. And for me, it's just like you, you push through it, just like anyone mm-hmm. who's ever had an injury. Um, you know, you just push through it and, and and put the work in like I like I gave the advice for the guys in college. That's that's me giving myself advice as well. Um mm-hmm. continuing to put the work in. When I lay my head down at night, that's what I tell myself. Did I did I do the work that I needed to do to have myself prepared to be able to, to come back and be ready hundred percent. Um so those that that that's what I do. That's mm-hmm. what I'm doing. Uh that's that's what I be doing. I get off this phone, be going to therapy and uh, putting, putting the work in to, to get myself back. Andrew, this is my favorite segment on the show. It's called the Fast Five Quick Round. It's five quick questions, and you have however long to answer the five questions. So the first one for you, favorite MLB stadium, and I'll throw this in there, uh, a f- MLB stadium that for the team that you haven't played for. Okay. Um, I'll probably say... It had always been Colorado, it had always mm-hmm. been Denver, uh, mm-hmm. playing there just because of its, it's a mile high stadium. Um, one, of course, the ball flies there, <laughs> and just the just, just uh, in the outfield, you're able to roam roam mm-hmm. around as if the fence isn't behind you, just because there's so much room out there. So, uh, just having the freedom of just trying to run after a ball and catch it, and not really have to worry about a wall behind you, is, it's uh, it's great and. Yeah, just the vibe of the, the whole stadium is awesome. So I always love playing there every time we go there. Go to music. Um, uh, there's, there's quite a few. Um, uh, a guy by the name of Lecrae. Mm-hmm. Um, guy not by the name of Andy Minio. Social Club, NF. Um, uh, quite a few guys. Um, just people who rap about everyday life, really. Um, and the things that they battle. Um, being a human being, being a Christian, um, but uh, they have they have uphill battles that they have, and just, just like every other person, so I can relate a lot to what they talk about. So I like to listen to it. Funniest teammate. Funniest teammate. Man, I've had some funny ones over the years. <laughs> um, 
my my top two funny teammates though um, coming up back in the Pirates organization was Steve Pierce, who was the MVP for the Red Sox last year in the World Series, and um, and Garrett Jones, mm. and he was a you know big big first baseman outfielder for the Pirates back in the day as well. So those probably those are my top two funniest guys. Favorite sports movie. Um, favorite sports movie, man. That, man, I got, I got good ones. Um, man, I have so many good ones. But uh, I guess honestly, I think Friday Night Lights. Like, mm, that's a good one. Like, one of the top ones for me, but I, I like there's other ones out there, of course. Yeah, but, uh, that's, that's a good one. Last one, and this is another tough one. Most underrated teammate. Most underrated, man. Um, man, that's, that's so many guys, man. Underrated. Um, wow. I, and on top of that, we got, I got to think of all the teams that I've been on the last few years. So, <laughs> so there's that. But um. It's a tough one. That is that is a very tough question because there's uh, I've been around for a while now, so it's kind of trying to think of so the, all the teammates that I had. But I'm trying to think of someone that people don't necessarily think about that it made such a big impact. Um, or what about most underrated play? player in the game today? Yeah. Ooh, in the game today, wow! Is that uh, even tougher? <laughs> Yeah, that's probably even tougher, but I, I'd probably say, like, I'd probably say Anthony Rendon. Mm. A lot of people don't talk about him. Um, but, you know, the guy hit, you know, 300 with 30 plus and 100 plus RBIs last couple of years, I think. And, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's done it for quite a while with, mm. his, with the Nationals. So, mm. um, you know, he's, he's, he's a guy who brings a lot, but doesn't get talked about a lot. Mm. And, uh, yeah, he's, he can, he, he's a very good player. Last question for you before we wrap up the interview. It was just announced this week about your project in Pittsburgh. It's a week of volunteerism in the city of Pittsburgh. Can you quickly talk about uh, this to the fans, what you'll be doing in the town of Pittsburgh coming up very soon? Yeah, we, we named the project Pittsburgh, me and my wife, and it's just going to be a week's worth of volunteering um, just in various areas around Pittsburgh. Uh, so, you know, it's basically uh, everyone's showing up. We, we need guys, people. We need people to volunteer. That's the whole the whole point. Um, and you can do that. You can volunteer by going on CutchWeek.com, and you get to see all the things that we're going to be doing for a week. Um, just to name a couple, um, like I, I'll, be, I'll be, I'm partnering with Macy's, and we're going to have a senior day, like a development day there. Going to uh, give away some suits. Um, I'm having a baseball clinic um, as well, um, just a free baseball clinic for the, for the kids there, inner city kids, and um, and yeah, 412 food rescue. Um, you know, we're we're, we're going to be delivering food. You want to have some food there? So there's just a few things that we're doing. Habitat for humanity. Mm. We're going in houses, and uh, yeah, just just making the houses look better, man. Mm-hmm. But it's all about volunteering. So mm-hmm. like anyone who wants to be a part of it can. And the way you do that, again, is by going on CutchWeek.com and signing up to volunteer and whatever that you want to do. I need everybody's help. So mm-hmm. um, that's what it's all about. And I can't wait Can't wait to have a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, November 16th, that's when it starts. Well, Andrew, thanks again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the show this morning. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate have a great, that. Have a great rest of your day.